I'm not going to, I'm only going to start the message here this morning because I haven't got time to, to preach the whole message. I uh, only have half an hour to preach the beginning of it. So I'm going to la lay a foundation. I'll carry on with the message over the next couple of weeks. And we've been speaking in this house about this year, the year on the Jewish calendar, 5777. On our calendar, 2017. But specifically, the Jewish calendar, 5777. Now, five in the Bible, the, the number five means grace. It means God's grace. Seven means completion. It means perfectness. Now, we have five, and then we have three sevens. So, three is also the number of God. And this year is a very prophetic year. This year is also called a jubilee year. Jerusalem this year celebrated their 50th year since Israel came back to the nation. The 50th, their 50th year. 50 is also the number of Pentecost. It's the number of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on the 50th day. So numbers are quite important. Now I'm speaking, this message is really about that, 5777, because this year is a year of new beginnings. God begins new things in people's life. That's the first seven. This year is a year of restoration. God is restoring people's lives. Things that the devil has stolen from them, hurting them like them, being robbed of a child. And the third seven is the seven of complete victory. Not half a victory, victory but a complete victory. Many times in our lives, we, we've been hurt by the enemy. It could be, you know, maybe when we were still small or young. And we've been battling with this thing in our, in our lives. And this year is a year of complete victory, overcoming that thing. It could be a sickness, a disease. It could be a, in, our, in our soul. It could be anger. It could be an addiction. Anything like that. This year is a year that God wants to give complete victory for His people. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. I believe it. I've taken it. And I, I'm trusting God for complete victory. Not half a victory. Complete victory. So this morning, I want to start by teaching you on the five arrows of complete victory. Say five. Five arrows of complete victory. Like David picked up five stones... When he, went, he came against Goliath, but he only used one stone. Now, if you look at David and his story, when he picked up the stones and he picked up those five stones, he picked it up by faith. And I believe that every stone, the first stone was J, the second stone was E, the third stone was S, the fourth stone was U, and the last stone was S. The name was Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? So when Goliath came against him, he said, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a lance, but I come to you in the name of Jesus. Take this. And he killed the giant with the first stone. He only needed one stone to kill the giant. Now let me tell you, I only have to preach the, about the first arrow this morning because that is enough to achieve complete victory this year. So re we read the story in the book of Kings where King Joash came to Elisha that was on his deathbed. And King Joash was harassed by the king of Syria. Israel was terrorized by the king of Syria and the Syrians. They were terrorizing the Israelites. They were a very strong nation. They had a strong army. And Israel was not capable of defeating them by themselves. They needed God's help. They needed God's power to defeat the enemy. So Joash came to Elisha for help. And then Elisha did something supernaturally. We need to understand this. They don't want me to walk down here, but I feel I need to walk down here because they want me on camera. I don't like to be on camera. That's why I walk down here. Now we need to understand that there was a battle that was coming. 
sometime in the future, there was a terrible war coming against the Israelites sometime in the future. So this king went to the prophet of God. He went to the man of God that was really representing the Holy Spirit for help. So what the prophet did was actually gaining the victory spiritually so that by the time that they get to the physical war, the victory has already been gained. This, we are spiritual people. We gain the victory first in the spirit realm and then in the natural realm. This is, this is the truth in our lives. We need to understand this. So now, now let's read here in the book of 2 Kings. And Eliza said to him, Take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Draw the bow, and he drew it. And Elisha laid his hands. Now here is the first arrow that I'm going to speak about this morning. He laid his hands on the king's hands. And he said, Open the window. That is the second arrow, eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. That's the third arrow. And he shot. And he said, the Lord's arrow of victory, the fourth arrow. The arrow of victory over Syria. For you shall fight the Syrians in Afek until you have made an end of them. In other words, a complete victory. Total destruction of them. So there is the picture. Can you see the picture there of the king and the prophet? Now, and then he said further, And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. That's the fifth arrow with them. And he struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it. But now you will strike down Syria only three times. So we see here a prophetic victory that was given by God but was not received in its fullness by the king. Why? Because we see here that for some reason he had not a very strong faith demand. When it came to the fifth arrow he was weak in that. In the fifth arrow. Okay. Now let me speak to you this morning about this number one arrow. Whatever hardships we may face in this life, sin is the root cause of it all. It all began because of sin. The sin of Adam and Eve and the sin of our ancestors and our sins and sins of other people around us. But sin is the root cause of all the hardships, all the problems that we will ever face in this life. Sin is the root cause of it. When I was uh, flying back from Mauritius, I had the newspaper. And I read the shocking story of a very well-known television personality that was recently killed. He was murdered. He's a relatively young person. I was quite shocked. I didn't know the full story. But it, it happened a couple of days or it happened the previous week already, uh, they, were they were speaking about his funeral. And people were criticizing the pastor or, or the duomini who, who uh, led the funeral for the message he preached. So people were criticizing the message, you know. And uh, some would say, you know, if there's a God, why did he allow this to happen? And all this and that and so on. I was thinking about this. And we need to understand. We need to understand why the whole world is in a mess. We need to understand why there is so much pain, why there is so much suffering, why there is so much death and war. It's all because of sin. God is not the author of this. God didn't start this. Man did. 
Man is responsible. We are responsible for what is happening on the planet. Yes, Pastor, but isn't God in control? God is limited. He limited himself. And this is where some people don't understand it. He is the almighty God. But God has limited himself in many ways. God can do whatever he likes to do. He is almighty. He is all powerful. He can intervene if he wants to. But God has limited himself. To what extent? That he has made man a free agent. He has given him a free will. Man can decide for himself. God could have made robots. He could, and then, what, what then? We would all be robots. So God gave man a free will to choose. Life or death. We can choose ourselves. We can choose the kind of life we want to have. We need to understand the word of God from Genesis to the book of Revelation. We need to understand why the cross came. Now, whatever hardships we may face in this life, the root cause is sin. But the good news this morning is this. The good news of the gospel. This is the gospel. The good news is that Jesus came to give us complete victory over sin. That is why Jesus came. That is the reason why He came. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son to come and save us, to come and help us, to come and rescue us from ourselves and from the enemy, from Satan and His demonic forces. So God did what he could do. He became a man himself. God became a man. And he came into this world. He was born into this planet in the right way, a legal way. Because we need to understand that God is also a judge. He's not only a father. He's a judge. A judge. There's a court in heaven. He came, he, had, he came into this world because the world, the planet, was made for man, not for God. It was made for man to live here. God has not got a body like you and I. He didn't have a body before Jesus. So he had to create a body for himself. But he first had to seek a man. He had to seek somebody that could believe, that he could use to, pre to prepare a bloodline so that he could come into this world. So he was looking for a man. When, even after Adam sinned, God was looking for a man that he could, he could do something. He could bring in this bloodline. But the evil people just became more evil and evil. Until the time of Noah, and God had to wipe out everybody. Only Noah survived. But then we see God found Abraham. He found Abraham. Could cut a covenant with Abraham. Because God does nothing outside of covenant. Everything God does is through covenant. Can you say amen? Everything God does. We need to understand the Bible is a book of covenant. The old covenant, the new covenant. If we read the Bible, we need to read the Bible through the glasses of covenant. If we want to understand the Bible. So God found Abraham. And he cut a covenant with Abraham. And then he tested Abraham. What did he do? He said to Abraham, I want your son, Isaac. Who knows that Isaac was a wonder child? Because Abraham and Sarah couldn't have children. They had to believe God for a child. And then one day Isaac was born. But, you know, when he was a young man, God said, Now I want you to sacrifice him. Because God had to test him to see if that he would stick to covenant. And he was tested. And we know he passed the test. He sacrificed Isaac. God said, Because you did this, you will be blessed. And God threw uh, Isaac from Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. He, he created the nation of Israel. He created the bloodline for himself to be born into this world without sin. Until Mary came. And she was conceived, she, she conceived by the Holy Spirit. God created a body for himself. Now listen, if that is not love, what is love? To come and save us. 
Because we need to understand that God is not a man. God is a spirit being. The Bible says he left all his glory. He took on human form, became a servant. He came and walked in the dust roads of the earth. He created himself. He submitted himself to the natural laws that he created himself. He came and he submitted himself to the pain and the heartache and disappointments and everything life can throw at us. The rejection, everything. And then he went to the cross and he died on the cross for us. He took the punishment, our punishment, the wrath of God. He took upon himself. He was without sin. And he shed his perfect blood to set us free, to give us the victory. Can you say amen here this morning? The cross is the victory. Jesus came to give us complete victory over sin. But yet many people are still caught up in sin. Why? Because of ignorance. Jesus gained the victory. It is His victory that must become my victory. It is His victory that must become, become your victory. It is through the Spirit of grace. Through His Spirit of grace, we, we are all able to gain the complete victory. It is the Spirit of grace that we receive from Jesus. Now we need to understand something. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, covenant the Jews had the law to show them how sinful they were. And they had to make sacrifices to cover their sins. The blood of innocent animals had to cover their sins. But the blood of the animals did not have power to release them, to set them free from sin, from the power of sin. But that was like an intermediate plan, strategy that God gave, working towards the cross, working to, towards the Lamb of God that was going to come at the right time. So when the right time came, the Lamb of God came, and John the Baptist, he shouted out, he said, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, not just cover the sins of the world, but takes the sin away, destroys the power of sin. Listen, Jesus destroyed the power of sin on the cross. If we still live in sin, we are deceived by the enemy. We read in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. You cannot separate the Old Testament and the New Testament from each other. You cannot think that the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are two different gods. It is the same God. The whole Bible was given for our benefit. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the Word of God. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that goes out of God's mouth. This word, the word of God is our life. It is our bread. We live by it. Can you say amen? amen. Daily. It is by the word of God that we gain the victory. We know the, we get the knowledge of the truth. If we have the knowledge of the truth, we can have faith. If we don't have knowledge, we can't have faith. So we read here. We are destined for complete victory. God has destined us for complete victory here in 1 Corinthians 15. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give Him a praise offering. He gives us the victory outside of Jesus. Outside of Jesus, there is no victory. I don't care how many religions are in the world. There in, in uh, Mauritius, 65% are Hindus. There are some Muslims there. There are some Buddhists there. Whatever. 
I'm telling you here this morning, outside of the cross, there's no victory. It is only through the blood of Jesus that we can have victory, that we can overcome sin, that, that we can escape hell and can have eternal life. Come on now. Only through the cross. Only through the cross. Some, something amazing happened to me there. I was ministering this Sunday at the church, and I noticed there was a lady sitting there, and she was crying just about from the beginning. She was just like crying, crying. I thought, what's wrong with her? But I kept on preaching. So towards the end, when I, after I've prayed for some people for back problems and so on, the pastor brought her to me. And he said to me, you know, pastor, this lady has come to church today. She's not a member of our church. It's the first time that she's here. I said, yes. And he said, do you know what she's saying to me? She said that she was dreamt in the week. She dreamt about you standing here preaching. And this morning when she came here, you were preaching. And she's so touched by the presence of God. Let me tell you something. God loves us. With an, doesn't matter where we are. Does, he loves the Hindus. He loves the Muslims. He loves every person. The Bible said He sent His only Son. Because He loves us. I'm preaching about that Jesus. I've given you the introduction this morning. Because the only way for victory in our lives is through the cross. That's where it begins. Now, do you want to know the first arrow? The first arrow is to pray. Is to seek the Lord. To seek His presence. Now, we cannot do that unless we know Jesus. Unless we've come to the cross. The first step always is to come to the cross first. To get saved. And then we get access to the presence of God. God becomes our Father. We can call upon His name. Can you say Amen? And whenever we call upon His name, He will hear us. And He will rescue us. So the first arrow, this is what happened. The king was standing there and the prophet said to him, Okay, come here. Bring that bow. Bring that arrow. And while he was lying there on his bed, he said, Okay, pull now. And he put his hands upon it, the hands of the king. This is where it begins. This is the first arrow. When we pray, when we worship, we draw upon the Spirit of grace. The Lord's hand will come upon us when we pray, when we worship God through the blood of Jesus. We pray. In our situation, we draw upon the Spirit of grace. You see, Jesus poured out His Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, He poured out His Spirit of grace. There's a big difference between the Old and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant people didn't have double anointing. Elisha is a type of the church that received a double anointing. When Jesus poured out His Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. What happened? The Holy Spirit came upon people, but the Holy Spirit also came inside people. We are a peculiar generation. We are a sought-out generation. We are a blessed generation because we don't only receive the Holy Spirit upon us, we receive the Holy Spirit within us. He comes and lives inside of us. Praise God. We've got the double anointing. We've got the double portion of God's power upon our lives. We've got resurrection power to overcome the, the law of sin and death. We've got the power of the grace of God. Not our strength, but the strength of the power of the Holy Spirit. How does it begin? We need to pray for it. We need to go to God. And I'm speaking about a victory not, I'm not, not focusing on our last victory, really. Our complete victory, that means that we're going to go to heaven. I'm speaking about victories in our lives. Because God is leading us from victory to victory to victory to victory. Amen. 
It could be in the beginning. It could be our finances. Poverty. Poverty is a curse. I've seen it there. It's a curse. I see it in South Africa. I see it in Africa. Poverty is a curse. And that curse, through the power of the cross, through the grace of God, that curse can be broken. And there I, can I can come out of that curse of poverty. Praise God. Divorce. Generational curses upon my life. Sicknesses, diseases, heartaches, all these things because of sin can be destroyed because of the power of the cross and the spirit of grace of God. So when I begin to pray, I draw upon the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace that is within me begins to pray, come out, and it begins to fill my life with His power. Can you say amen? The Bible says, do not be, get drunk of wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when I begin to pray, and the Lord's hand comes upon my life, there are four things that He will begin to do. Number one, He will restore me. He will begin to restore me. He will, if, I, if I had fear or whatever, He will restore faith. He will, he will confirm us. He will put His hand upon me and, and say, I'm, I'm with you. He will strengthen us in our souls. He will establish us. This is where it will take you. He will establish you on the rock, on the truth of the Word of God. Can you say amen? This is what the Spirit does. But we need to pray. We need to pray. If we don't pray, we are powerless. We don't have the Spirit of Christ helping us if we don't pray. And then we have to depend upon ourselves. We try to sort out things ourselves and we make a mess of it. But when we begin to pray, come on. When we begin to pray, say to somebody next to you, when we begin to pray, God's hand comes upon us. He intervenes. In this house, I teach the congregation, pray in the Spirit. Because that's what the Bible teaches. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you pray, you get a new language. You get a heavenly language that only God can understand. Because our earthly language is really a hindrance sometimes to our prayer life. Our minds. You know, because when I begin to pray for somebody, my mind will begin to wander away, you know. I can't pray a perfect prayer. But when I pray in my heavenly language, I pray a perfect prayer. God has given me the ability through the Holy Spirit. And normally, we, when we're in a situation of struggle, it's hard to get into the Spirit. Because the enemy has got us down. He wants to keep us in the flesh. Because when we are in the flesh, when we are in Adam, he can eat us. He can destroy our lives. The Lord said there in the Garden of Eden, dust you will eat to the snake. You will eat dust. So if we are in the flesh, He will eat us. We can't rule from there. But we can rule from our position in Christ. When we begin to pray, we are given the position of the right hand of God. God's right hand comes upon us. We pray from the Spirit. We pray from victory, not from defeat. I was saying in the first service, um, I don't like to drive my car until the needle is on empty. Or you know that light, that warning light comes on. I like to drive it until about half and then I fill it up again. But my wife, she'll drive her car until it's that, that light comes on. <laughs> empty. Some Christians are like that. Nobody here, but some Christians are like that. They'll, they'll go until that red light comes on empty and then they want to pour it. I say, no, 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 don't, don't go that far. Pray continuously. Pray in the Spirit. You begin in Adam. Listen, if you, can't, if you don't know how to pray in Afrikaans, pray the Psalms. There are very powerful Psalms. If you are surrounded, you, you can sense the enemy is working in your life. He's trying to destroy you. And take the Psalms. 
used the Psalms that David didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of him. He didn't have this, this wonderful gift of praying in tongues, but he prayed, he prayed prophetic prayers. He would say, Lord, when he prayed against his enemies, he say, Lord, hit them, strike them, break their jawbones. I would like to pray like that against your enemies. Let them fall backwards. Wipe them out. Begin to pray in the Psalms. And I, I promise you, after you've prayed for a while, the Psalms, you'll sense the presence of God come upon you. Begin to pray. You have to begin somewhere. And if you're not used to praying the Spirit a lot, exercise it. Begin in Afrikaans, or English, or Sutu, or Kosa, or Zulu, whatever. But don't stay there. You begin to pray in Afrikaans, and then you, you switch to a higher gear. Because why? If you pray in Afrikaans, or English, or Zulu, whatever, for a long time, you'll be shooting like with a hail gun. You know, hail gun. You know, you hit something. But when you pray in the Spirit, your prayer becomes like laser. God directs your, your spiritual prayer like a laser. He hits the target dead on. Listen, your victory comes much closer, uh, 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 faster. When you pray in the Spirit, your victory comes much faster. It's like an arrow that God shoots into the enemy's belly. When you pray in the Spirit, Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows everything about you. He knows all your weaknesses. He knows all your struggles. He knows everything about you. Amen? I want to stir you up here this morning. We are a praying church. But we are gonna, we're going to pray right through the winter. We're going through to October. October, we're uniting with uh, our international network via satellite and internet like we did last year. We'll be praying the Friday night here, the Saturday night here, and the Sunday night here connected with churches all over South Africa. We're going to pray for South Africa for restoration. Amen. Praise God. Last year, we prayed, and we asked God to break the drought. And you know what God did? He filled up the dams. Praise God. Listen, our God is a supernatural God. He is alive. He is not dead. Can you say amen? amen? So let's stand here this morning. Now I want to stir you up this morning. This is what Apostle Peter said here in 1 Peter 5 verse 10. He said, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. This is who God is. He is a God of restoration. He is a God of healing. Let's close our eyes for a moment.